All right, so now that we've discussed the basics of HTML, I want to actually jump in and get our hands dirty a little bit and do some HTML programming. Uh, you'll see here I've created a small project, and it's, it's just a single web page with all the elements that we've talked about, um, a heading, paragraph, uh, image tags, styling, um, title, page layout. So. Uh, we're going to jump into this now and you should have these files you should have the project files and this is actually located in chapter one section one and this here fave pick done is the finished product and right now we're just going to create recreate this now one of the things that we need to discuss is the editor that you're going to use which is extremely important um, you should use something that you're comfortable with but for HTML and CSS the it, we don't need any complicated environments we could actually use just notepad standard notepad um, what I would recommend is notepad plus plus it just offers a little more uh, developer friendly tools to use so uh, you can download that uh, just Google notepad plus plus I'm not sure the actual URL but it's free and it's really easy to use so that's what I'm going to use for this particular series alright so <clears throat> what I want to do now is create a new file let me close this out I want to create a new file to work with now you'll see we have the the fave pick done HTML file um, I'm going to create a new file and I'm going to call it index HTML Let me just do that real quick Oops. save as and you should save save the project before you even start um, so I'm gonna save it to the same folder chapter 1 section 1 and we're gonna name it index HTML so the reason for this naming it H index HTML is so that you don't have to actually type the file name in the browser so if we had mysite.com slash favepick if we don't want to, to specify favepick.done.html then if we name it index.html the page will load it, it automatically loads index.html so that's why I'm naming this I mean it's just if it's going to be the actual page that you want to load automatically then you want to name it index.html so now I want to start the actual code so we have index.html now what we want to do now is just open the the index.html in the browser so I'm going to open it with Chrome and you can use IE or, or Firefox or wh whichever your preference and the first thing that I want to do that we have to do in any HTML document is define the doc type so we just want to define the doc type and we want HTML if we were using XHTML or something else this would be different uh, and XHTML doc types are a lot longer as well um, so that's the first thing always and the second thing will be the HTML opening tag now you can type as you go the tags or you can do what I like to do and just close every tag you make every opening tag close it right away that way you don't have any errors any mistakes in the format um, and the next thing we want to do is the head so we want to open the head tag and close it and in the head tag in the head tag um, we can do a lot of different things you can have meta tags keywords um, all kinds of scripts or links to, to CSS or JavaScript files but in this project all we're going to have in the head is the title so open it close it and I, sometimes I'll leave it on the same same line if it's going to be a short amount of, of content in the tag so for the title we're just going to have favorite pick. Now I'm gonna save this and go back to the browser and this is the index HTML page you can see and reload and you'll see there's nothing in the inner area here 
that's because our content that we have right here is in the in the head and in the head is the title and the title shows up here in the browser bar <clears throat> I mean in the browser tab um, the title is very important for SEO reasons if you want to you know rank, rank well in the search engines the title is what people will see when you come up in the results so I mean that's a whole different topic altogether but just something to, to know so what I want to do now is I want to view the source this is the browser page the presentation page I want to view the source through the browser which could be different depending on which browser you're using I'm using Chrome in Chrome you go to tools and then view source and you'll see it's the same it's the same thing and it shows the, the the raw HTML so it's really good if you want to troubleshoot and if you if you missed some closing tags or anything like that so we're just gonna leave that open and then we're gonna continue to add HTML to our document so after the head we need to have a body so opening body tag closing body tag now the body is this is all is the inner browser and what we're gonna do now is we're gonna add in a heading tag an h1 tag now I, I think I mentioned this but heading tags go h1 through h6 and h1 being the largest h6 being the smallest so we're gonna have a, a heading and we're gonna call it favorite pick just like the title close it save I'm pressing control s to save just so you know now to reload and there's our h1 tag and the size of this is determined by the browser because we have no no style attached to it no custom style so uh, in all the all the, most of the browsers it's, it's about the same the same size h1 through h6 so next we're going to add the paragraph and if it's a paragraph or something that has a lot of a lot of content I usually have it on its own line so I put the paragraph here and you can see how I'm indenting inner tags have an indent so for the paragraph uh, let's see um, and you can just write anything here it's not the contents not really important it's just the format that we're looking at it's bright and alright so that's in the paragraph tags I'm gonna save reload and there's our paragraph alright so the next thing we want to do is add the image and the image is a singleton tag as I explained earlier so it doesn't have a closing tag we're just gonna have the IMG <coughs> and the main attribute is source which points to the to the image file wherever that may be for us it's actually in the same directory as the HTML file so we don't have to use any folders or anything like that so we're just gonna put the name of the pick which is fave pick.jpg now if you had a folder here called images and you had the image in the folder then you would add the images folder to the to the file name to the source and the next thing we want to add to the image tag is the alt and I'm just gonna put my favorite pick and then we close it we don't close I mean we close the, the head tag the beginning tag there is no there is no ending tag like this that's wrong and if this was XHTML which it's not we would add the slash like that so we'll save that, control S, save, reload, and then we have the image. So as far as, as markup, as content, we're pretty much done. What we want to do now is, is separate the parts we want to style and add the selectors, the CSS, um, to whatever we want to add it to. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is take basically everything and wrap it in a div so I'm gonna put a div right here an opening div tag and then a closing one 
after the image because this will give us a div tag with everything everything you see inside of it and I'm gonna do some indenting just to make it more presentable so we have all that wrapped in a div I'm gonna save it and you won't see any changes yet because there's no style attached to it it's just it's just a, a tag <coughs> All right, so the next thing I want to do is add style to the body. So we're going to add a style attribute. And, excuse me, I need some water. So for the style, we're going to add a, <clears throat> a margin. We're going to cut the margin out because automatically it adds margin to the body. You can see here it's not it's not flush up against the up against the browser so we're just gonna put margin zero save I'll reload and now you'll see it's flush up against the edges the next style property I want to do is the background color of the entire body so we're gonna do the background color selector and we're gonna make it <coughs> gray save reload and now we have the entire body is gray and now I want to make this text I want to change the color of the text to make it white so we're just going to use color now I could just do white that works I'll save and reload but if you want to usually if you want a more specific color you, you would use the hexadecimal value for it as opposed to just writing the color because I mean <clears throat> there's only so many colors available as text so if you want right here I'm going to use the hexadecimal value for white which is six F's and I'll save it reload and it's white now I could change this to the black hexadecimal value which is six zeros save and it's black and then there's others like six C's is light gray but we're gonna keep it white okay so now what we want to do is style the <coughs> we want to add some style to the div which is the entire thing the entire page and the only style we're gonna give to that is gonna be a width a width of 750 pixels and the reason I chose 750 pixels is because that's how big the image is so I want the whole thing to end where the edge of the image is now I'll save that and reload but we won't see any changes because we didn't add anything except the width and now what we want to do is add to the heading <coughs> we want to add style to the h1 tag and we want to we want to zero out the margin just like we did to the body I'll reload and you'll see now there's no top space and I do want to add a padding actually I'll, I'll do the background color first so the background color of the background color of the heading is going to be a hexadecimal value for a purplish color which will be 533 uh, 24d semicolon you always need a semicolon in the middle separating the selectors save reload and then you'll see we have the background with the h1 tag <coughs> excuse me now we, what we want to do is add padding to this because you'll see the H1 tag has doesn't have much space has almost no space between the edge of the purple and the heading text so I'm gonna add a padding of five pixels save reload now you'll see this it looks much better there's more space and it looks much more clean now the difference between padding and margin I can I can show you right now is that padding is from the edge of the text here the edge of the text to the top of the div that's the padding margin would be from the edge of the div out so 
let me just show you if I added a margin of 30 pixels save a margin of 30 pixels to the heading you'll see it's from the outer edge out padding I'll just add 35 just to show you padding is the inner the inner spacing so that's the difference between margin and padding Let's set those back okay so n the next thing will be the paragraph and you can see there's a lot of space between the paragraph I want to margin that out on a zero that margin as well save reload uh, alt. I forgot the style attribute. Haven't done that in a long time. Reload, and now you see the margin's gone. I do want to add a background color of black. I'll use the hexadecimal value. Reload. Uh, what's going on here? Oh. Quote has to be on the end. Save, reload, and now we have a black background. Now I do want to add a little bit of padding to that too, so I'll do padding 5 pixels and save, reload, and now we have the padding. So it's really taken shape and we did it in a very small amount of code and next we'll be talking about tables and lists.